welcome back to Inverted Aviators RC. This video is going to be a little different than our normal high-flying RC plane quad cam FPV content. And that's because we've been getting a lot of comments about how we achieved the FPV content from our UMX Turbo Timber Evolution and the other planes that we fly. And in order to see what your plane is seeing, you need a full FPV camera, video transmitter, and a whole system to send that video signal to your goggles or to whatever monitor you're using. That might seem kind of daunting. If you're a line of sight flyer exclusively, you might think, well, that's a whole lot of extra things you gotta get into. But we're gonna break it down into what we use and what we love because it makes the flying experience for us a lot more fun because you can see what your plane is seeing. It's a lot easier to do acrobatics in our opinion. You always know what orientation your plane is in. And we have found the Wolf Whoop WT03 micro FPV all-in-one camera. We love it for so many reasons. For starters, it's only 5.8 grams. These UMX planes, the weight is at a premium because they're so small and if you have a huge camera, a big nice setup on it, well, it can really throw off the weight of the plane and you really don't want that. And so having such a small camera is super helpful. It also has an adjustable video signal output power and you can switch between 25, 50 and 200 milliwatts. And that's good for if you want to fly a little further away, you can switch into 200 milliwatts and get a, a stronger a signal. But if you're flying really close and you don't want a lot of interference with a stronger signal, you can switch it down to 25. And it's really nice to fly with other people right around you. You've seen our other videos, we fly next to each other quite a bit. And if we all had a super high output power, it might interfere with each other. It's also very, very simple to set up. And all you have to do is give it power. I'm going to get into this more a little bit later, but as you can see, we only have two wires coming off this camera and the rest of it gets powered from the internal battery. And there's no setting up of the channels or the different signals. It just comes all prepared and it's super easy to get set up. They are also very, very rugged. Uh, we have crashed these planes quite a few times. You can see my nose cone is a little beat up, but these cameras are super rugged. We haven't had any break on a crash. You might have to bend some of these antennas back, but they are super rugged for their weight and it works really well um, for newbies because this, this was my first plane I flew and I've crashed a few times, but these cameras have stuck with us and they've been exactly what we're looking for. They also work surprisingly well at night. Again, we've got a few videos of us flying well past dusk where if you were just standing there without any goggles on, you might not be able to see these planes, but with goggles on and these cameras tuned, you can adjust the brightness and the contrast you can actually see really, really well at night. And we love that about this. We didn't know that at the time when we bought them, but after flying quite a few times, they are awesome for at night flying. And on top of all that, you might be thinking this has a pretty high price tag, but it turns out you can get them for only about $18. And we'll link these, we'll link all the stuff we talk about, It'll be in the description. But they're $18 for one of these cameras. We've bought a few of them to switch in between our planes and they are awesome. We, we have so much good things to say about these cameras and we love them. Now that we've got our camera taken care of, or the real star of the show, we can break down what we do with it in three easy steps. One is how to attach the camera to the plane, where to attach the camera, and then also how to power the camera. So we're gonna start off with the first step, how to attach the camera to the plane. And this is obvious, it might be simple, or it is simple, Tape. You can just slap it right on the top and we've tried a few different kinds of tape over the years and what we've grown to like is a tape that is a little thicker. It allows you to angle the camera a little bit more precisely. So as you can see, there's a little bit of wiggle here. If you had a super thin piece of tape, you're limited to the curvature of the fuselage. Meaning if you have a tiny piece of tape, you're you can only angle the camera at this angle of the curvature of the top. However, if you have a little thicker piece of tape, you can actually kind of mold the camera into the angle that you want on top of the plane and then stick it and it'll stay there. The second reason, it makes the video feed a little less shaky because it absorbs more of the vibrations from the plane. Now this was brought from my days of flying a quadcopter. You can put the flight controller on little gummy pads to kind of absorb the vibrations. This, this is the same idea in that a super thin piece of tape might not absorb any of the movements or the oscillations from the plane, but if you have a little bit thicker tape, um, it would absorb that a little more and your feet will come out a tiny bit smoother. Now that might not be noticeable if you're a first time flyer, but there is a little bit of that absorption that we love about a little thicker piece of tape. Again, we did link the tape that we use, but you can really grab any thicker piece of double-sided tape from a hardware store and that'll work perfectly fine. Moving on to step two, where to attach the camera. And we like putting it on the top of the plane, 
facing forwards with a little bit of the nose in the frame. And you've probably seen that if you watch our other videos where you have just a little section of the nose here in the, in the shot. And you might be wondering why you bother with that. Why not get a nice like all the way tilted up, can't see the plane at all view. It might be a little more cinematic if you do that. But our thought, it's, it's about spatial awareness. And that might sound kind of like, wow, that's kind of overkill for a tiny plane. But when you can see just the tad of the nose on your FPV feed, it becomes a reference point in the sky. And it helps keep track of your plane's orientation and position, making it much easier to stay in control. It also helps judge distances. So when you're coming into land, you can tell, well, if I know this distance is about four inches and I can see how far the ground is away, it's a lot easier to judge, oh, I need to elevate her a little bit to get off the ground or a little closer to the ground. And when we're flying, having a visual cue for depth perception is a real game changer because it allows us to gauge how close we are to trees, other planes, the ground. It helps reduce the risk of collisions by having this little bit in the air, you know how close you are to the ground. And for orientation's sake, if your camera is tilted a little up and you can't see any of the nose, you might think that you're totally fine and you'll clear that branch, that wall, whatever, but you actually have this much to worry about below the camera that you can't see. Moving on to step three, which is how to power the camera. Now this is the most in-depth because there are two methods that we've come up with for powering the camera. First up is the external battery method. And this one's pretty straightforward. You just have to strap a battery to the top because these cameras come with a um, one cell battery lead. Um, it's as easy as just plugging in a battery sticking it on the top and sticking the external battery somewhere on the top as well. Uh, well, a pro is that it's a piece of cake to connect. All you have to do is get your uh, external battery, plug it in, you're good to go. Like I was saying earlier, you don't have to set up any channels, any signals, anything. You just plug it in and it's easy to go. Another advantage to this method, it's easier to transfer the same camera in, in between multiple planes. So if you had, like we have these uh, evolutions, we have a uh, Timber X, we have a guinea pig, you can just take the camera off and stick it onto your new plane and it's really easy to just plug and play really. And so there's a lot of advantages to, to just sticking it on top. However, there's a few drawbacks. You'll need to buy a new battery. If you already sunk a few hundred dollars into a plane and a camera and other RC equipment, you might not wanna buy another battery, but something as simple as a 300 milliamp 1S battery will work and I'll give you a good amount of flight time, which again, we will link in the description. There's a little extra weight when adding another external battery. And again, weight is at a premium with these planes being in the ultra micro extreme class, adding any extra weight might throw off the plane. So it's a thing to consider when considering the ease of transferring these cameras back and forth. You also have to charge that battery. If you get to the field and you have no battery for your FPV camera, you're kind of out of luck because you can't fly FPV without an FPV camera. There's a worst case scenario. If you crash while flying, this external battery might get ejected and you might just lose it because if it's sitting on the outside, it makes it uh, susceptible for a little more damage if you're uh, crashing a whole ton. And lastly, this battery might run out of juice before you're done flying. So if you're high up in the sky or even worse, behind you somewhere where you don't know where your plane is and you runs out of battery, you will no longer get a video signal, which means you are going from FPV to line of sight involuntarily, which is never good. So you don't know how much battery is left until you land and check it. So the second method is the soldering the camera to the board power, not the battery power, the board's power. And that's because there's a few spare ports on this board. Now you won't be able to see it here, but I'll pull up a picture and I'll point it out. There's a few spare ports on the UMX Turbo Timber Evolution uh, flight controller board. And what you can do is if you find the correct connector, you can go from this 1S lead to a three pin lead that is the same on the board and you can get power directly from the plane. And there are a lot of advantages to this. You'll never run out of power before your whole plane runs out of power. Uh, if you just have the plane battery powering the board, the board powers the camera. If your plane falls out of the sky, you won't really care if you have a camera signal because you'll be trying to catch your plane. Uh, you also save a little bit of weight by ditching that external battery because all you're adding is a tiny cord compared to a full extra battery. Now there is a few cons. It, this does require some minor soldering skills. This is the adapter that we have linked. It's a three pin. You will connect it to the camera's red and black wires with these red and black wires. And you can see you're going to take the, the red wire, which is the middle wire, and the yellow wire, which is the bottom wire, 
and you're gonna solder those to the red and the black wire of the FPV camera. But yeah, it's super easy, and this should get power from your plane to your camera. Lastly, there might be a tiny reduction in flight time because your camera will draw some power from your main supply, but it's usually not that much. We haven't noticed anything crazy. We've flown with the 200 milliwatt output and we haven't seen any degradation in flight time, but it is something to consider that if your plane is sitting out and it's getting hot from the camera, it could drain the battery a little bit more. So which method would we suggest and which do we prefer? Well, if you have a ton of planes and you're switching between planes with your camera system, we would suggest the external battery method because it's super easy to only buy one camera, one or two external batteries, and you can go plane to plane and it's really easy. If you have one main or two main planes, it's really, really handy to do the solder to the board method, mainly because it simplifies our daily flying routine. We don't have to hassle with charging or maintaining an external battery, and you'll always have power to your camera just by plugging in your battery and it's super simple. We have two more tips that we're gonna share here before we're done. If you put the camera on the very top, we would suggest getting some conformal coating. This is the stuff we use. And what this does is you paint it on the electronics of the camera and it'll harden and it'll become waterproof. And that's really handy because a few times on a landing we have flipped and we've landed in a little wet spot of grass. And if you don't have the camera conformal coated, it could short out the camera and you'll have to buy a new camera. But if you get this conformal coating, which we love, you can paint it on, it'll be waterproof and it'll be awesome and it'll work really well. Our last tip is actually how we got it all set up in there. Um, you might notice that this wire just runs straight down and that's because we put a slight modification to the battery hatch right here. There's this little uh, cut. We just put a little notch in there. So when it's time to fly, you still slip in the battery hatch. You slip in the fuselage and now the wires will run down smooth. You won't have any flopping wire and you won't have this battery hatch misaligned so that it's kind of off kilter and it might fly off. So by adding this little cut, it makes things really easy to install and attach and really take flying as quick as possible. So that is how we get the FPV feed onto our planes. Uh, let us know if you have any questions about how else we do it and we'd love to answer any and all comments that we have. And we appreciate you taking the time to watch this how-to video. And uh, feel free to check out any of our other videos to see this FPV camera in action. Thanks.